Good evening. The topic the Holy Spirit has just given me to share and to make a record of is called Beware of the Old Prophet. I'm going to read 1 Kings chapter 13. I'll read some verses and skip some. And later on, when you've got a minute, you can read the entire chapter for yourself. I'll read from verse 1. And behold, there came a man of God. So let's take note of that description. So this man of God, he came out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. King Jeroboam was the king at the time. And as the Bible records in many verses, it says that that was the king that made Israel to sin. Verse 2, and this young prophet that we started to read about in the first verse, and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be burned unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense unto thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is a sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when king jeroboam heard the saying of the man of god which he had cried against the altar in bethel that he put forth his hand from the altar saying lay hold on him and his hand which he put forth against him dried up so that he could not pull it again to him the altar also was rent and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and he became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou comest or thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now, let's take note of the following few verses that I'm going to select and read from. I'm going to read the first line of verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. Look at that description. Instantly, an old prophet. I'll skip and jump to verse 18, talking about the old prophet now. He said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house that he may eat bread and drink water but he lied unto him so unfortunately in verse 19 we saw the young prophet that he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water and it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the lord came unto the prophet that brought him back and he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, 
For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment, the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy cakers shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. This is so heartbreaking. And you know, according to what the word of God said, through that old prophet on the table, so it happened. The young prophet saddled his hearse and went carrying on on his journey. And in verse 24, it says, And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his cacus was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it, the lion also by the cacus. This is so, I mean, reading it now, I can feel it right in the core of me. How that young prophet that God used to fulfill his word, to bring his word to the king and with the signs and everything that followed, how his life and ministry was cut short because... He listened to this old prophet. The Holy Spirit said to me a few minutes ago, he was showing me picture and visions of what is ahead, what will be happening shortly. And I believe that this year is going to be remarkable in a lot of ways. Some of God's people and armies that have been in hiding, training, because like the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman said that God hides his best do not be in a hurry to come out and for the world to hear you. Let God announce you at his own time. So this year, I believe, would be a year when a lot of people will be unraveled, unveiled, and brought to light, announced by the Lord himself. And the Lord is saying, when that happens, listen and follow his instruction to the later. Because you will have those by the same description according to verse 11 now there dwelt an old prophet or an old prophetess in the land or some distant land it might be in the same vicinity where you are the same town the same nation or from far away when god starts to announce you and the lord gives you a word you talk about it and it comes to pass or you reveal something to somebody and intending danger, you pray together with the person and that, that evil is averted or whatever, however God has chosen and planned to use you. Stay focused, beware. When that starts to happen and the testimonies start to flood in, they will to the glory of God, God is faithful. When that begins to happen, you start getting the calls. Some of them are genuine. The Holy Spirit will confirm to you where to go and when to go and when not to go. And he'll give you specific instruction. When you go to this town, don't stop here. Stop there. Don't eat this. Not everything that people eat, you'll be allowed to eat. Don't forget you're, you're a person of consecration. Not everything people drink, even if it's soft drink, there are certain things that the Holy Spirit will say, not this time. Be attentive, be attuned, and follow the instruction of the Holy Spirit all the way because that is your lifeline. He's trained you all this time and he wishes and desires and plans for you to carry out your ministry to the longest time possible, either when the rapture occurs or when your time here is done. Do not let that be cut short by some old prophet, young prophet as well as old prophet, or somebody, somebody that is probably not being that relevant in their day. And you know what? They've heard of this fire that has been ignited in your life by the Lord, and they'll do anything. Like we saw this prophet, he lied. If he could lie easily, who knows what else he'd been doing? Who knows why God wasn't using him like he used him in his younger days? Maybe because of the compromises, whatever, only God knows. But he lied. Probably not the first time. So God is sending out this warning to myself. I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to me 
And to everyone that will listen and hear this message, take it into your spirit. Don't get carried away and overly excited. There's so The journey is long. Like the angel said to the prophet Elijah, when God visited him through the angel where he said to the Lord after Jezebel had threatened him and he said, Lord, I'm tired. Take my life. I don't think I'm better than my father's. And while he, he went to sleep, the angel showed up and said, rise up and eat because the journey is long. The journey ahead is long. God has great plans to do with your life to bring him glory. Stay focused. Most importantly, stay disciplined. I've shared something on one of the um, messages on my channel on YouTube where I said the title was what has God said and in that teaching I said if God has given you instruction today trust him for an update tomorrow and the day after don't think that the God that gave you this instruction all of a sudden will not be able to speak and he will use social media or use the news channel or use some other means to speak to you like this old prophet said to the young one that God spoke to me. When the king asked him to come home with him and get refreshed and he'll give him a reward for restoring his hands, he said, no, I, w I wouldn't. The Lord gave me this specific instruction. And there's something I heard a man of God say, which is so true. When God speaks to you, don't forget there are evil spirits that hear it as well. So they will take that word and walk on it and come back and make sure that they throw all kinds of temptation and suggestion your way to make you to bend and deviate from that original word that was given to you. So I trust that in the course of your being trained and mentored and developed by the Holy Spirit, he would have revealed to you teachings, trainings, words that would have equipped you for what is ahead. So when these temptations come to be distracted, those words will come back in your spirit that no, remember this teaching here, remember this word here in the, in the scripture, remember this prophet here, and you stay focused. So this is my word of encouragement from what the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. And this word is for me, first of all, before everyone that the Lord would lead to this space to listen to this. Beware of the old prophet. They want to, I, I, I don't know the reason why some people will do that while they'll sit in their houses and cook up lies that, you know, I want to get this person under my roof. I want to maybe hear them prophesy to me or maybe share their experiences with me, share their background. I'm not sure. Because one should be afraid if you're a prophet of God, a man of God, a woman of God, a servant of God, a child of God, a Christian, fear sin, run away from sin, and lies is sin. So why you would sit down and cook up such lies and deceptive deceptive words and say, I'll, I'll do everything and say everything to get this person under my roof. It shows how far they've gone from the Lord. So be careful. Guide that thing that the Lord has given you with all jealousy. When you protect that word, that word will protect you. When you protect the anointing, in fact, it was something that my great man of God, my mentor, said in one of his teachings many years ago when he referred to this same teaching. He said, when you protect the anointing, and he was referring to when the young prophet gave the word to, to the king and he stretched forth his hand to get him arrested and all, and the judgment of God came on him. God protected him from being harmed by the king because he guided God's instruction with jealousy effectively and God fought for him but when he he deviated from the word the power of God worked against him then the lion was sent and killed him straight away so guide the anointing guide the word guide everything that God has given you with jealousy fervently with watchfulness refuse to be distracted and your ministry will be long beware of the old prophet God bless you.